Sierra here with Gypsy Fane Creations. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm doing the soap inspired by my favorite animal, and I bet you can't guess what that favorite animal is. I might decorate with them everywhere. <laughs> and they also give off a fall vibe, foxes do. I know I see a lot of decorations in the fall that have foxes in them. I like to use them all year round. They're all over my house. They are my spirit animal. I love them. Anyway, I also want to get into a different technique, one that I've not used before, so of course I'm challenging myself and I don't know how it's going to turn out, but it's called a sculpted soap technique. I'm pretty much going to be sculpting layers into my soap to get the shape that I want. It is 90 degrees outside. I know it's September. I'm already working up a sweat and I just got out of the shower, so like, come on Marilyn, get it together, I'm ready for fall weather. But I was outside working in the garden and I know I've given you guys a garden tour, at least a front garden tour before, and now that it's the end of the summer, I, I just thought I'd update you, show you what's growing out there, um, what creatures are hanging out in my front yard, and how I didn't do much with it this year. <laughs> Um, so stay tuned after the video and I will give you a little garden tour, but for now let's get soap making and make a fox themed soap. Her fingers. <laughs> I think I have everything I need here. I'm only making a small batch of this soap just because I'm not quite sure how it's gonna go um, and if it turns out I'll be making more animals with this technique. So again, fingers crossed. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my buttermilk powder in here. I've got my kaolin clay in here. All my oils. I use seven different oils. And then my sodium lactate um, and Y solution. Let's pour that in. I'm going to get this to a very light trace and then start splitting things up and using these little templates that I cut out of like plastic and hoping that they do the job. <laughs> All right, let's give this a mix. So the colors I'm using, I've got the Sunset Orange Mica from Brambleberry. This is going to get a lot of use. I can tell you, I've used this in a couple other soaps for fall. I've got some Mocha Brown Mica from Nurture. And the first layer I'm going to try is the brown. I'm gonna do some brown, I'm gonna do some white, and then I'll do the orange. So let's give that a mix. Make a mess there. Scrape that down. I don't know why I put it in such a small container because I can't get it back in the container. Alright, the fragrance that I'm going to be using is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It is called Orange Clove and it is one of the low cost or um, it, it's inexpensive fragrance. I gotta clean that up. <laughs> so I chose that fragrance just because I wanted something simple and orange and clove sound right up my alley as far as autumn scents go. Nothing, nothing too complex. Just some orange, just some clove. Alright, so I'm going to take this first template that I have here. Let me scrape this out first. And I think this needs to set up a little bit more so that I can sculpt it. So I'm going to let that sit for a little bit and then I'll come back and then I'll try playing in it. Let's see what I get here. I'm going to make 
maybe go back and that. Okay, I'm going to keep playing with this. I also have this like putty knife here that I can use to remove like the excess soap and clean up any of the edges. Let's try that again. So, just like that. Looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go through and straighten up the edges on this. This putty knife is great. <laughs> The hubby pulled it out and didn't even realize this is what I'm going to use this for. Thank you. Getting those straight lines. All right. So that looks good. And so then the next part of this, I'm going to make up the white. All right, that, that's as good as I want to get it. <laughs> not fun, not fun. Maybe I need more practice. All right, so the next part of this is the white. So I've got some titanium dioxide in there. And then I'm just gonna give that a mix. So this white part is supposed to look like the tail, I guess. The, the brown is like the feet. This white's gonna be like the tip of the tail. I am making a huge mess over here. Add my fragrance to that. This fragrance, you're not supposed to add a lot of. It's like 0.70 percent so a little goes a long way it does not discolor it seems to be holding up pretty well and behaving very nicely all right so let's mix that up and then I'm going to pour that over top of the brown and let that sit for a second while it thickens up So then the final part of this shaping is going to be the face of the fox, which is what the orange is going to be. This is like probably a very, very beginner way of working with a sculpted layer. Since I've never done it before, I didn't want to go with anything too complicated. I've seen people who do like horses and mountains and streams and all kinds of things inside of soap. And I'm, I'm not quite there. I like to have fun with it. And to me, that just, it seems like a lot of work and a lot of frustration. And for me, probably a lot of disappointment. So triangles, I'm just gonna go with the triangles. All right, we'll let that harden up and then I'll sculpt that. So another reason why sculpted soap layers drives me a little crazy is all of that leftover soap batter that I've just scraped out of there, that's not going in my design. It's not going anywhere else in my soap. What do I do with it? Yes, you can make samples. You can probably throw it in another mold if it's not too thick. I am going to wrap it up in some, some saran wrap. Once, once it's a little more hardened, I will you know, roll this up and stick it in a Ziploc bag. And tomorrow, it's going to be hard enough that I can remove it and use it as a soap dough. So future soap project there, looks like a pile of poo. <laughs> but that, that is one thing you can do with any leftover soap batter that you have. Um, I'm gonna try working with this guy now. And all I wanna do with him is just create 
the face for the fox in here. I don't want to get into that brown layer that's it down there. Kind of just turning it on its side too so that it gets the edges. Alright. Trying to get the sides too. I'm gonna let that sit a little longer. It's still a little too runny. That again. Although with this white, if there's any left over, I can always just add that back to my batter because a little, a little white soap never hurt anything. I'm really trying to get in there and smooth the sides as I go. Oh, the mess. This is just like a process that you have to keep going over and over until you get what you want. Almost there, I think. And then I'm just gonna go back over and clean up the the ends and we'll move on to the final part. So I wanted to add a little nose in this guy. So I've got some black melt and pour and I'm just going to pour it in like a stream in the crevice or the triangle part of this <laughs> sculpted soap layer. So hopefully when I cut into it, it'll like a little pointed nose. Just a little bit. And then I'll let that sit. Spray that a little bit of rubbing alcohol to get the bubbles out of there. And then for the final bit, I've already mixed the orange in. The sunset orange mica. I've got the leftover batter from the white that I did not use that I'm mixing in here. It might even create a cool little design like an in the pot swirl or something or I'm just going to keep mixing it until it's all mixed in I think. Alright and then we can start pouring it on top of here. I think it's dry. Hopefully I don't get a lopsided fox face in the end of this. on this. There's not going to be any icing top on here. It's going to be a little low top soap. And I'm going to top it off with some ears. So I've got these little ear shapes here that I'm going to line up for my embeds to look like the top of the fox's head. Scrape this all out. I'm going to clean up my mess here. And then we'll start putting the embeds on. All right, let's put our ears on, like so. Super cute. I cannot wait to cut into this. I think I wanna add a few other things to it when it is cut. I don't know if I wanna add eyeballs to the face or if I want to add um, some sort of leaf decoration. 
just a little something else. I have to think about it. These are gonna be so cute. Right. Did you know that some foxes are pets? I can't remember which way this is supposed to go. Now they're not supposed to be pets. The foxes are a, a wild animal, but in some states, they have rehabs for foxes that have been rescued from fur farms. And I do follow a lot of Instagram accounts. There is McDoodles Animals. Her name is Michaela and she runs a fox conservatory. Lots of different foxes. You'd be surprised. There's not just one kind of fox, like an orange fox. There's like arctic foxes. There, there's just plenty of other foxes that I didn't know existed. And they are such sweet creatures, although I hear they can be moody and smelly. <laughs> so it's not something I'd ever want. Um, Maryland doesn't allow you to have pet foxes, but I would be scared that, like I hear they dig up your, your couches and your carpets and yeah, no thank you. I just, I will decorate them and look at the cute little videos from afar on them. Alright, so I will let this sit for 24 hours and then I will come back to cut it and hope that I get the little cute fox face I'm looking for. Are your fingers crossed? Fingers and toes. This was like the messiest soap ever to make. I don't know. I was thinking about making other animals. Um, as well with this design and now I don't think I want to. <laughs> it was a lot of work. <laughs> I thought of, I was talking about pet foxes. How do you feel about pet foxes? I don't know how I feel about pet foxes. <laughs> I think that foxes should be in the wild unless there's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so like if they, like the, look how cute. I, this, this... I hope. It, okay, this Instagram account is called Juniper and Fig. Oh, yeah. 2.4 million followers. And how adorable are these little foxes? Look at them. Look, look at them. Like, who, who wants to go follow these two foxes? Because they're just so cute. And they even have, like, a little, little dog friend that they wrestle with. Like, you'd <laughs> never think that you could have a pet fox. And this is, like, how cute they would be. I kind of want a pet fox, Bradley. Yeah, I'm just let's, uh, let's buy some land first. No, I'm. I hear they're like they're they're pretty naughty. <laughs> well, so are cats. Um. Well, I think they they mark their territory. Oh, oh, look at it! <laughs> look how cute it is. <laughs> See all your hard work turned oh, off. Oh my goodness! Oh, I'm so happy with that. It looks just like a little fox face. <laughs> You're gonna cry. Don't no. Do that. <laughs> I did not have high hopes for this like, soap. Wow, I thought you were about to cry over like the, the soap. The first time I've ever tried sculpting a soap and I was like, oh, this is a lot of work and I can't really see what I'm doing. But it turned out so cute, even its little nose. Look at its little nose. I don't know if it, do I want to put eyes on it? Or do I just want to leave it like this? I think it just like, just like that. Just like, like that. It's oh, like his beautiful face. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Maybe oh, the next one you try to put eyes on it. Oh, so I think I want to do other animals now that I saw this. Oh, now you want to <laughs> I've, changed, I've changed my mind. <laughs> so anyway, guys, if you do get on Instagram and you are not following me, go check out um, Gypsy Fake Creations on Instagram because you get a lot of sneak peeks over there. I actually have a few soaps that I'm like, what do I do with that I might run a little special on. I'm going to have a giveaway soon. I do a lot of live cutting of like restock soaps and just like general life things. So head on over to Instagram and find me, follow me, get some sneak peeks. Bless you, Luke. I just love this soap so much. Like, I don't even want to give it away. I just want to keep it all to myself. <laughs> and I I scented it in um, clove and orange. So it's Ooh. like orange and clove. Like, I love it. Its nose is so cute. <laughs> like, like, it's the perfect little shape. It's just this little nose. Oh my god, I'm so in love with this soap. <laughs> I'm glad uh, everything turned out the way you wanted. Yes. Want. Alright. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. 
any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below. Let me know what your favorite animal is. Maybe I can come up with a soap. It's like like the people who make balloon animals. <laughs> I can make like <laughs> soap animals. Like watch me sculpt your favorite animal in soap. <laughs> and till next time, I hope you all have a very nice day. And I hope you're as happy as I am with this soap because I'm just over the moon with this. Smell you later. Oh, it's so cute. So front garden update, I have let it go. It has just taken over. I didn't weed. I did not plan anything this year. I just I just kind of neglected it and let it do its thing. I've got the honeysuckle and wisteria there. I've got a lilac here. There's a hydrangea. There's a gardenia in there somewhere. These guys look like this, but they're dying off because it is the end of summer. And that is a coneflower or echinacea. I always have trouble with that word, like I'll forget that's what it's called. Um, there is some hosta over here, and then this, all this purpley blue flower that's just engulfed the front yard is called blue mist flower. Hey, come back. And it is a wild flower that usually year after year I will pull it because it doesn't bloom until late summer and as you can see it really takes over the whole entire front yard. Look at this guy. So it's pretty and when it blooms and the moths and butterflies just go crazy for it. They're just hopping around everywhere on these purple little flowers. So I just kind of let it go and I'm glad I did. Got lots of pretty things growing in here. Look I even have some some weeds in my flower pots but I am I'm loving these purple little flowers I don't know the neighbors probably think my my yard is very overgrown and I'm fine with that because in the end it is absolutely gorgeous it's just a jungly mess of pretty flowers and shrubs one year I'd like to have a real garden not just this little front area these guys like it over here. I want to say it's called a Great Spangled Fertiliary Butterfly. But they're just flying around everywhere. There's my Clementis, another Hydrangea. My poor little rose, I get like one rose once a year on this poor thing.